this girl was stolen from her parents by monkeys. This is her 30 years later. Can you imagine the anguish that would grip you if your child were to vanish without a trace? You've always been there for her, and one day, even when you had only momentarily diverted your attention to answer an urgent call, someone decides to snatch her away, leaving you powerless to prevent it. If you're a parent, you likely understand the sheer agony this situation can inflict. It's an indescribable pain that no one should ever have to endure. Our story begins in Colombia, when during a hot afternoon in 1950, a four-year-old girl named Marina Chapman was kidnapped and taken away from her family forever. A story that, since it came to light in 2013 through a book published by its own protagonist, has not stopped gaining new followers and generating new questions around the mystery surrounding Marina's disappearance and everything that happened to her afterward. But before going into details about what is real and what is likely to have happened, let's go back in time to the exact moment when Marina Chapman's life and that of her family was forever changed by her unexpected abduction. Marina was born into a wealthy family southeast of Bogota, Colombia. Marina's life until the age of four could be described as a fairy tale, especially considering the level of poverty and crime in a country like Colombia. There, being born into a good family was not the norm, and if you were, you were targeted by all those who were not as lucky as you. Her family was very rich, one of the most powerful and influential families in the Latin American coffee trade. They had coffee plantations all over the country and earned thousands of dollars a year from their business. Their life was a dream, and that unfortunately fed the resentment and envy of their main competitors, and they knew it. They were always aware of the danger they were in and had received threats before, although none had ever materialized. Marina was an only child which made her much more vulnerable and reduced the kidnapper's options for attempting a kidnapping for a generous ransom. However, they'd never suffered any direct attack to alert them to the imminent danger they were in, until that fateful August afternoon. Everything seemed to be going well. The family had been quiet for a long time without any threats. However, as Marina's dad retreated indoors to attend to an urgent work call, what they had feared happened. There was no one else in the house that day but him and the girl. Her mother was away, so there was no one else around who could have known what was going to happen a few minutes later. Marina was playing with her dollhouse in the back garden when suddenly a black van pulled up near the walls surrounding the garden where the girl was. A hooded man climbed over the wall and grabbed Marina roughly all at the same time using a chloroform cloth to put her to sleep and prevent her screams from alerting her father. It happened in just a few minutes and by the time Marina's father realized everything, it was too late. Marina, where are you, honey? shouted her father, searching everywhere for his daughter to no avail. For weeks, they searched everywhere for their daughter. They contacted the police because they suspected a kidnapping and hoped to hear from the kidnappers to ask for ransom money, but none of that ever happened. The police searched for months for the girl, but they found no trace of Marina anywhere, nor was there any ransom call. Everything pointed to the fact that Marina's kidnapping had been personal, a kind of revenge in which the family's money had little to do with. Their only objective was to inflict maximum pain, taking from them what they wanted most, and they succeeded. As time passed, they assumed they would never see her again and even declared her officially dead and held a funeral. However, Marina never actually died on the day of her abduction. She was not even held captive or abused during the entire time she was missing. What actually happened was something completely different and unexpected. After her kidnapping, Marina woke up in the middle of the jungle. A hooded man belonging to the group of kidnappers who had taken her from her home was carrying her over his shoulder. Suddenly, there was a crash. The man who was holding her screamed in fear and dropped her. The little girl lay motionless on the ground waiting for the noise to stop while the men fled through the forest. Marina crawled along the ground until she reached some bushes where she could hide. She didn't want to risk the kidnappers coming back and realizing she was still alive, so she stayed there hiding, huddled to the ground, waiting for the danger to pass. However, as she waited, exhaustion got the better of her and she fell asleep. The next morning when she woke up, she was surrounded by monkeys. Marina tried not to panic at the sight of the pack of monkeys staring at them. They didn't look very friendly. Suddenly, one of the monkeys pounced on her and started pulling her hair. Marina stifled a scream and closed her eyes tightly while the rest of the herd approached her and touched her from all sides. The girl was terrified. Fear prevented her from moving and she stood still while the monkey's curiosity made them poke her eyes and pull her hair incessantly. She hoped that by staying still, the monkeys would tire and leave her alone, but no such luck. As the minutes passed, the monkey's curiosity intensified and Marina began to scream. The monkeys pushed and scratched her all over her body, but no one could hear her, no one would come to her rescue. She was all alone in the middle of a Colombian jungle and surrounded by a pack of very cranky capucin monkeys. Things were not looking good for the little girl. The little girl screamed at the top of her lungs for minutes, but to no avail. There was no one there to hear her screams, at least no one human. Finally, after more than 10 minutes of incessant torture, the monkeys got tired of her and left. They probably realized that Marina was not something edible and that she posed no threat to them either, so they moved away from her and into the jungle again. Marina didn't know what to do. She was very scared and starving, so she decided to follow her instinct and followed the monkeys in search of food. She walked for more than an hour until she reached a clearing full of tall trees. That place must be the home of the herd. At first, the monkeys looked at her with distrust, but after several days, they learned to ignore her and let her live with them. 
She spent hours watching them imitating everything they did. This is how she managed to learn to take food from the trees, to make a makeshift bed for herself so she could sleep among the thickest branches and to climb without difficulty. She was very hungry since being so small it was very difficult for her to reach the treetops and keep up with the monkey's fast pace, but she didn't give up. She followed them everywhere and ate everything they ate. It was the only way to survive and the girl assumed this new way of life very quickly. However, one day Marina made the fatal mistake of putting some poisonous berries in her mouth. For a child of her age, it was impossible to distinguish between edible and dangerous food. For monkeys, it was not. The girl began to show signs of feeling unwell. Her abdomen was very sore and she was shivering. She lay on the ground writhing in pain, holding her belly with her hands. The monkeys began to surround her and watched her motionless. Some were even suspicious of her attitude and stood on guard. Suddenly, an older monkey who seemed to be the leader of the herd, whom she later came to refer to as grandfather, lifted her off the ground and dragged her forcefully through the undergrowth. Marina at that moment thought that the end had come and the monkey was going to drown her, but it wasn't so. The animal took her to a nearby stream and forced her to drink muddy water to force her to vomit the poison and recover. The monkey never meant to harm her but to save her. After vomiting up everything she had ingested, Marina spent a whole day sleeping on one of the beds the monkeys made among the trees. It was the first time she felt like she was really part of the herd. From that moment on, little Marina Chapman's life would never be the same. Everything she had been and known up to the moment of her abduction was left behind. Little by little, she became one of the herd, learning to live wild in the forest and behaving as if she were a monkey in order to survive and integrate into what for more than five years became her new family. One day you go from being a threat to being part of a big family. One of them gently put his hands on my shoulders, it was almost like a caress. That's how they told me that I was already one of them and that I was home," explained Marina in one of the chapters of her autobiography. Everything that happened after her abduction and her coexistence with the wild monkeys is a confusing story full of gaps, in which Marina Chapman herself admits to feeling lost. Of course, she did not spend her whole life as a monkey. At some point in her adolescence, she managed to leave the jungle and lead a normal life as a human being. But she didn't have it easy, far from it. As she herself explains in her autobiography, The Girl With No Name, published in 2014, when she was around 11 or 12 years old, Marina came across some poachers in the forest whom she approached growling. The hunters took her out of the wildlife she was leading and gave her a job. In reality, though, what they did with her was force her into prostitution, something she managed to escape from years later. During her years in the jungle, Marina had completely forgotten how the human behaved, so she didn't talk or walk like other people. She had to learn to adapt to the highly social human society around her and it took her a long time to do so. Life had not made it easy for her either, as she hadn't stopped meeting bad people whose only interest was to hurt her or make some profit at her expense without caring the least about the pain this could cause her. Her life was a constant of comings and goings, but not everything that happened to her was bad. At about the age of 16, Marina says she was adopted by what would become her real and only family to this day. A Yorkshire family who loved and protected her regardless of her past or the difficulties involved in raising a teenager like her. In her new life in England, she met John Chapman, a respected scientist whom she married six months later and with whom she had her only daughter, Vanessa. After that, her life became as normal as could be expected, although she could never forget what she lived through nor all that she suffered in her childhood. That is why she decided to write her story with the help of her daughter and the unconditional support of her husband and friends. Marina wanted to tell her truth to the world in her own way. We don't care what people say, I don't even care if they believe what I say or not. This book is not to make me famous nor to make people believe in my story. The story is by and for me. It is a way to release the pain I've been holding all my life. It is my liberation. I'm not looking for money or popularity. I believe in myself. I know what I lived through and no one will be able to steal my memories," explained Marina in an interview she gave to The Sun after publishing her book. The reality is that the time she spent missing is unclear. No one has been able to determine the time and place Marina spent alone in the jungle, not even Marina herself. Nor have we been able to find any real evidence about what Marina says she experienced, nor about everything she did or didn't do while she was missing. We only have her word and her memories, or at least what's left of them. There are many who have tried to attack her, accusing her of being a fake who only sought fame at the expense of an exciting and implausible story. But none of these attacks succeeded in bringing her down, nor did they prevent her from continuing to tell her story. Marina never found her family, not even after publishing her memoirs, but her story is an example of a terrible event that a strong young woman managed to overcome. A speech in favor of hope for all those who at some point in their lives have felt lost and sad. Marina is proof that true happiness can always be found, even if it takes a long time and we have to overcome many difficulties before it happens. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.